Hello, Brenna Provost here. How is everyone? And I am here today, oh, trying to get in the view here with Ben Tran at Tran Creative. And Ben has been a longtime friend as well as a good friend of my husband's. And Ben runs Tran Creative here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. He's been in business for about 11 years. And not only does he have this amazing business and he's worked for a bunch of amazing brands um, for locally, so Kootenai Health, our big healthcare facility, and then as you guys jump on, uh, be sure and say uh, the city and state that you're jumping on from, say hello to us, let us know you're out there. And McEwen Park, a newly redesigned McEwen Park. Ben is also a triathlete, so he's done the Ironman several times. And then before starting his own business, he also worked um, for a very big branding firm and worked for a lot of big um, national brands and took his talents here, you know, brought it to Coeur d'Alene for us, um, as well as he has five kids and an amazing family, so doing it all. And he's gonna share some of his insider secrets as well as he did a new logo for me. Um, and check out his cool hats. <laughs> <laughs> so Ben, um, just share with everyone a little bit um, about why you decided to get in business for yourself and start your own branding and you know, Tran Creative and talk to everyone a little bit about that. All right, thanks Freda for the introduction. Um, well, I always knew I wanted to be uh, in the creative industry. Um, so I went to school for it and spent a lot of years, many years in school, seven years in school, and finally got my degree in uh, graphic design. But as it, it turns out, my career is shifting quite a bit, has shifted quite a bit. And I've been doing a lot more than graphic design. Uh, I've been doing a lot more uh, strategic branding and there's just a lot of ideas and strategy behind what I do nowadays. Not so much. Graphic design is a small segment of it. Very cool. And you're he's doing a triathlon tomorrow at so. That's right. So give him the <laughs> roster of all of your incredible triathlon career. And you started out with my husband, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so in 2008, Brenna's husband, my best friend, Phil, he, uh, I didn't know how to swim in 2008, so he's like, let's, let's do a triathlon. So he taught me how to swim, and uh, I, I bought my first road bike in 2008, and I hated running, so I had to learn how to like, enjoy running. And so that's how it got started nine years ago. And uh, uh, at, since then, I've done over 50 triathlons and wow. a bunch of marathons. Some as a, a guide to a blind runner, my friend David Kuhn in Chicago. And uh, it's, yeah, it's just a bunch of Ironman events and just to try to stay in shape and have the energy to raise a family and watch, chase after my kids and run a business and live, live life. Absolutely. Well, Yvette, welcome. As you guys jump on the broadcast, be sure and let us know uh, what city and state you're jumping on from. If you guys have any branding questions, um, this is the guy right here. And so tell them the ages of your kids. Um, five. Crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so my kids are uh, five, seven, nine, eleven, and 13. Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So maybe share a little bit of your, some of your process and so for all the entrepreneurs that are starting out, like what are some of the things that they should be thinking about when it comes to getting things started, branding, creativity? Well, you know, uh, I'm blessed to be able to, to run into or to meet so many entrepreneurs starting out. I meet so many people with ideas, concepts, business concepts, um, and I've seen I've seen a lot of them come and go. Some turn out to be successful, you know. Some even paid us for projects, but they never really got started because they didn't put it didn't go, they didn't go through with it. So I've seen it. I feel like I've seen a variety of cases. Um, but I think for me. I, you know, actually, I'm an entrepreneur as well. I have several ideas in the work uh, dealing with uh, 
technology and the healthcare industry, and we're trying to create uh, a software that can really help with the healthcare industry and solve some problems. So I'm always thinking about ideas and sketching my ideas out and planning. So I think it all comes down to really solving a problem and not doing it for the money. I mean, the money part will come, um, but just really doing it because you love it, because you believe in it, and because you know that it could actually make society better. It could solve a problem that would help other people. Absolutely. Well, and as you jump on, hey, Michael, hey, Dan, hey, David, thanks for joining us. And I think that's so true, the entrepreneurs, we love helping to solve problems for other people. So that's a really good point. And I, Ben is the best because I come up with all these ideas for as an entrepreneur. So as you know, I was saying, oh, like be brilliant broadcast and I got all this stuff and come to Ben and he's setting me right. So tell me, tell everyone a little bit about what you told me as far as branding yourself and, and that aspect of it. Okay, so I was just explaining to Breda, um, you know, Breda wants to call uh, <laughs> this segment something, giving it a brand, a big brilliant uh, session or something like that. But I told Breda, Breda that, you know, you're starting out, <laughs> you're trying to develop a brand, the Breda Pro Provost brand, you don't want to dilute it with including another new brand into it, even though you're trying to make it unique and trying to brand it. But you're not at that point. You know, people ultimately remember you as Breda Provost, the Breda Provost show, sure. not so much the Be Brilliant show <laughs> or something that you also have to market alongside with your own personal brand. Right. So super important to. So would you say for every? I mean, especially in my industry. So being in network marketing, direct sales, it's super important to have that personal brand. And would you say that to every kind of business or more so like the solopreneur, you know, the single entrepreneur that's trying to build a name for themselves? Um, I think it really all depends, but um, I mean, just focus on the most important part first as you're starting out and that's just building the name. And most of the, most of the small businesses like you're starting out, it's all about, you know, your own personal name, right? I mean, your name, not so much. Uh, a fictitious name. Right. You're trying to market Breda uh, because it's more personalized. And another thing I have to bring up to is a lot of time people ask me as a small business starting out, what about a tagline or a slogan? I have so many taglines and slogans, right? But the question is, I ask, I always ask the question that I let them answer. So when was the last time you remember a small business with a slogan or a tagline that you remember? And the answer is not often, if not at all. And why is that? And the reason is because most small businesses don't have the funding, the budget, like McDonald's or larger corporations to just mass brand it. You know, those taglines, just do it, are always there in your face with billions of dollars in marketing. As small business owners, you don't have that luxury to pay that kind of money. <laughs> People are so, they're not gonna remember your tagline. So headlines for a specific campaign is okay but not really a tagline for your company because no one remembers. Very true. I really only remember the big brands like Nike, Just Do It. Some of McDonald's are not my favorite, but I do remember them. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So one of the things, like maybe share some of your other insider secrets about when you're working in the creative process with people. <laughs> He doesn't want to give all of them away because you got to come see him because he's amazing. <laughs> and I love Ben's work and he's helped us out, uh, you know, several times with our, when we had a hotel business and just bringing things back um, into focus, which I think is really good. And um, he has done as well all of, a lot of the designs and been involved in almost all of the races that are around town in Coeur d'Alene. And I think Ben has been super instrumental in helping bring, you know, the triathlon and the Ironman and everything that's been going on in Coeur d'Alene. You've helped Coeur d'Alene be healthier. So maybe you can talk about that a okay. little bit. Thank you. I, I think I can help Coeur d'Alene with uh, not only be healthier, but also be more noticeable. Uh, because we have an amazing venue here with a beautiful lake. Uh, and then we have just the mountain, the terrain here is beautiful. And you don't really get to see how beautiful this area is until you travel. So I've done races all over 
the country, different Iron Man events, and I had to swim in like a man-made reservoir full of bacteria. And then I come here <laughs> and I swim in this pristine lake that we have here in this town of Coeur d'Alene. So when I first started doing triathlon in 2008, I received a t-shirt, the finisher shirt and the medal, and I just felt like they were an afterthought. Mm -hmm. And for somebody who has trained so hard, put so much effort into finishing a race, you want them to be proud and feel accomplished and have something to really uh, remember that event. So I, I thought, I'm, I'm going to get involved with the community and change the way racing has been, you know, which is handing out metal that's like a dollar, like a soccer medal that my kids get, or a t-shirt, you know, just like an afterthought. So I just start getting involved with the design, the creative, nice. the metal qualities. I want to push the envelope for metal design so that each athlete, when they cross that finish line, whether it's a marathon or a smaller race, they feel like, wow, this piece is significant and I'll, I'll always remember it. Super cool. and. He's got a bunch of them right over here. I bet there's some he's designed as well. And all of you that are joining us, Chad, Greta, um, as you come on, we'd love to know where you are jumping on from as far as your city and state on the broadcast. And Ben, one of the things that I like to ask every entrepreneur that has a family, because I have a family, you have a family, you have kids, way more kids than I think I can ever <laughs> handle, but somehow you do it. Just running a business, having a family, like how do you do it? Um, I think in my situation, I'm, I'm blessed to have a dream career. I have a really good team running the show after 11 years, so... I remember starting out, there's no way I would have this much time to do all the, all the training and racing, but I'm at a point now in life where I can actually do that and be able to put my kids first, you know, taking them to school in the morning, go through all of their school activities, um, and then um, take them home after school, and then we have soccer games, then we have art, we have after school programs, we have all kinds of acti activities for them. And performances and I, I never miss any of those events because that's the most important things to me right now you know has always been the most important thing to me in my life and then uh, yeah like I said the business runs itself with a good team nice. um, so it's a blessing very cool well I think that's great that's why I do what I you know most entrepreneurs start that's why um, you know, I have a home-based business so that you can have that schedule that works around your kids and I love that I get to be, you know, stay-at-home mom and entrepreneur at the same time so that I can have that experience with my kids. I know this year my kids are both going into school, going to be in school for the first time, so that's kind of crazy. But um, what are some other, maybe, are there any other big mistakes that you see entrepreneurs um, when it comes to branding and getting started? Started that you can think of maybe to share with them and then we're gonna do a logo reveal so Beretta Provost logo I'm super excited so maybe a few other one last thing to share with entrepreneurs like big glaring you know things or even little ones that are common um, I think an important part and I've learned through I've learned through the hard ways uh, I struggled for several years when I first started this business because people didn't care about how talented you are, you were, and they didn't really care so much about what you have done for other companies, larger companies, or whatever. What they really are concerned about is what can you do to what can you do to help me to solve problems, my problems, as a business starting out or an existing business. Um, and so for that, I had to make adjustments along the way. Sometimes when we go into a business, we love our ideas so much and we believe in us so much that sometimes we forget to really take a look around us and see what is needed. And then we evolve as we go. We can't always be stuck to one model from the get-go. You have to be flexible to change, to adapt. And that's what I've done in the 11 years. I've seen quite a bit of changes in the industry, uh, specifically, especially now with websites, with Squarespace. With Fiverr, you can get a logo for $5. Why, why pay $5,000 when you can get a $5 logo? Or why pay $10,000 for a website, for example, when you can get a website for $10 a month? Right. 
Well, right. that's a good point. So right. why don't you tell people like what what is the difference? Because I think as entrepreneurs, probably that's one of those things like, oh, I'll, you know, I'll scrimp and I won't spend that amount of money. But what's the difference between going to one of those kind of places versus um, going to someone like yourself? You know, that's something that I rarely ever talk about. <laughs> but a lot of people ask me, but it's okay. You know, for example, logos, you know, what you pay is what you get. Uh, the process that we put in, um, we show the clients and they appreciate it because uh, in the money that we charge the client, we show why we are charging them that way because we have a process. And our process is not just jumping in and designing a logo. Uh, we have our own process that we go through. It's very extensive. It has to do with really studying what has been done right. in the industry and then we go away from that. See, that's the thing is so many logos are just an afterthought. Oh yeah, let's make a beautiful logo. Logos are not supposed to be beautiful really. I mean, it depends on what kind of logo, but as far, especially a brand, a company, a business logo, you want it to be unique and really capture the true meaning of the business, right? And so that's what, that's what we're trying to do is just put a lot of thoughts into it so that the client can be able to explain to their customers, this is what our company means, and this is the representation of our company. It's not something that we grab for a few hundred bucks online that could be grabbed from somebody else's design, and later on you realize, oh shoot, now I have to change my logo because that logo has been trademarked or whatever. So we, depends on the size of the projects, we go through an extensive period of time just researching of what has been done so we can avoid doing it. I mean, it's, it's very hard to do that, but it takes time so that we can save you the trouble for later on. Absolutely. And good point, Hillary. Thanks for jumping on. Just that, you know, you do get what you pay for, like most things in life. And I know Ben, you know, known him almost the entire time that we've lived here in Coeur d'Alene. And I know that he obsesses over projects and really digs into the company and the meaning behind the brand, that there's all sorts of thought that goes into it. So I was um, super excited to work with them about putting together my own personal brand that I can run with. So are you ready? Should we show them? Do you think they're ready? How about some thumbs up in the comments if we're ready for the brand reveal? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. All right, people. And we even fixed um, our camera so you can see it. So. Check it out, everyone. The new Breta Provost. We'll try not to get a little glare on there. Logo. Love it, Ben. Thank you so much. And I'm excited to put that on some pictures and use it. Um, I know that he was explaining a lot of the thought that went into this particular logo. So I know for something, you know, even considered a smaller project, how much time and effort you put into it. So anything else that you'd like to share before we wrap it up? Um, no, thank you for hiring us to design your logo and trusting us with your visual image. Awesome. I have, to, I have to reveal one thing. So okay. let's hear it. I'm, uh, <laughs> on Facebook, my friends are always teasing me about watching the show The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Right? And I have a reason for doing, doing that. And the reason is it comes back to branding. I'm fascinated by the show because on the first night, you have one person and he or she supposed to pick out 20, from 25 attractive individuals. Right? You have hours to get to know them. How do you pick? How do you decide who to pick? Right? I mean, and it comes down to whoever tells the best story will get picked. Absolutely. Whoever presents themselves in the most vulnerable ways, right, will get picked. And because they all attractive, right? And so that's what we really, that's why I'm fascinated with branding because as small businesses, I really want to help you as a small business to be able to get that rose um, client, to get that client, get that notice so you can stand out from the crowd. So that's why, that's why I love The Bachelor. Yeah, it's good. I'm the same way. I have some of those shows too that I watch and it's kind of funny because I look at it from a marketing standpoint as well. And I think that's a great analogy. So let's go, all, you know, go out there, get that rose, form your brand. And thanks for joining me, Ben. You're awesome. Thanks everyone. We'll catch up with you soon.